10 things that might make playing the game a little bit easier. At number 10, we've got the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth and the Repair Yak. At the cheap, cheap price of 20,000 gold, or 16k if you have the rep, you can get your very own portable repair vendor. As long as you're outside, that is. If there's one thing everyone should have, it's one of these mounts. I mean, technically, it's not really necessary as long as you're not too lazy to just go to a repair vendor on your own. And it's only useful in some raids, since you need to be outside to use it. But, well, that argument can be used for pretty much anything that makes life more convenient. The argument of, well, it's not really needed. And that's true to some extent, but that doesn't discount its usefulness either. And if we were to place the Repair Mammoth on a scale of usefulness, I'd put it at like a 6.5 out of 10. As for the Repair Yak, which also has a transmog vendor on it, I'd place that at a 9.5 out of 10, because sometimes you just gotta change your outfit in the wild, and you don't want to have to go back to a major city. At least with the repairs, there are engineering bots and stuff that can do that as well, but there is no other alternative to changing your transmog outside of major cities. Well, at least I don't think there is. Back when the Yak was a reforger mount instead of a transmogger, I'd put it at a 10 out of 10 in usefulness. I get called to go outside of the raid all the time because I was the only one in the group rich enough to afford the 120k mount at the time, which was a lot of gold to have back then, before Wad's garrison inflation. Because for a hot minute in WoW, you could change some of the stats on your gear. That was fun. Whatever happened to that? Number 9, the Gnomish Army Knife and the Thermal Anvil. I'll be honest with you, my general strategy when making top 10s is to start off the list with obvious or interesting things to get them out of the way and to draw viewer attention. That way I can talk about the more obscure stuff in the middle and then end the list off with the best parts like an ordered list should end off with. That is to say, it's pretty obvious that engineering stuff would show up on the list since the profession is all about making parts of the game more convenient. I know I leveled up engineering on new tunes just to use a looter ring. Makes grabbing loot so much easier, especially in ranged classes. And of course Jeeves and the portable mailbox will never stop being useful too. But no, this spot on the list is for the army knife and the anvil. The army knife was a lot more convenient back in Wrath when it was introduced, as many professions actually still needed professional tools to actually do their crafts with. Just so you know, you no longer have to use a mining pick to mine, a skinny knife to skin, or a fishing pole to fish. I mentioned this in another video and a lot of people were shocked about the change, despite it being in the game for a while now. Now, some professions still do use tools for them, so the army knife is still useful. Plus, it was a way for DPS classes to res players as it was also a res device. Well, for engineers anyway. And to top it all off, creating the knife was one of the easiest ways to level engineering at a certain point, so there were tons of them on the auction house for cheap. Many people use this thing for ages, and I bet some old school players still have it in their bags. In Warlords of Draenor, they introduced an upgraded version called the Ultimate Gnomish Army Knife, which added a few tools for other professions, but without a res function. Well, there is an engineering version of it that does res, and it has a higher chance to res than the 66% chance to res the old army knife had. Also, the Thermal Anvil is pretty neat. It acts as both an anvil and a forge, so you can do engineering stuff from anywhere. It can drop from a Blingatron gift package, so they're cheap to buy, and each one has 20 charges. Number 8 on the list is Little Ragnaros. For the cheap, cheap price of only $15, you can buy a Little Rag from the pet store, and while he's out, he acts as a cooking fire. No longer do you have to wait a few seconds to create a cooking fire. Now you can just summon one out instantly. Of course, if you don't want to fork over $15 for an instant cooking fire, you could always just buy Paris off the auction house instead. It serves the same purpose, an instant cooking fire in the form of a pet. But out of the two, which one is better? As some of you may or may not know, I also run a pet battle channel where I almost exclusively do PvP pet battle videos. Out of Little Ragnaros and Perry, Little Ragnaros is miles better than Perry. Little Rag is one of the only two pets in the game who can lay out a trap spell. Traps and pet battles will randomly go off at the start of a round over the course of the next nine rounds, and instantly stun the pet and do good damage to them. The great thing about this is that the stun will happen at the start of their turn, 
stopping them from doing anything that turn, plus the next turn as the stun will carry over, giving you two free turns to attack with Imputiny. The only other pet in the game who can use a trap spell is a pet you can only get during Children's Week, and is also good for the same reason. Plus, Little Ragnaros also has the highest attack power value of any other pet in the game, making him a crazy hard hitter with a good moveset. Is WoW Pet Battle pay to win, considering this great pet is also a cooking fire? Well, not really. There are tons of easy to get pets that are better than Ragnaros, but he is still a top tier pet. Perry is not though, he's kind of bad in PvP. On a scale of usefulness, I'd put Little Rag at a 3 out of 10, very quality of life. Number 7, Drums of Fury an item actually useful compared to Little Ragnaros. Drums of Fury gives you a lesser version of Bloodlust or Heroism, at 25% extra haste instead of 30% for 40 seconds. If you're doing Mythic Plus dungeons without a class that can use Bloodlust, this will be one of the most needed items to bring after flask potions, food buffs, and shit. Maybe even more important, the fact that they give 5% less haste isn't really a big deal as it's still pretty good at 25%, and for 40 seconds to boot. It's always better to have an inferior bloodlust than none at all. Also, they aren't really that expensive to make as long as you convert garrison resources into the mats used for them, and of course have a leather worker to make them. Number 6, the Drenic Swiftness Potion and the Dark Moon Firewater. There are a lot of useful potions and elixirs, but of all of them, I always carry around a stack of swiftness potions. Not only do they give a 70% speed boost for 8 seconds, but they also give a 200% swim speed boost. That's faster than the swift speed potion that only gives 100% extra swim speed. But to be fair, that one does last for 20 seconds, while the Drenic swiftness potion only lasts for 8 seconds. While the run speed portion is nice too, I mainly use this potion for its swim speed effect. There is a lot of water in the Broken Isles, and Suramar has a ton of little waterways that you can jump into to escape the guards. I usually just head straight to the nearest body of water whenever my disguise gets broken, and pop this potion and just outswim everything. And since there aren't a lot of other guards in or around the water, it's real easy to get away without pulling more of them. There are obviously other and better methods to get away but this potion helps with a lot of other random shit too, since it does also have a decent run speed increase. The other potion, Dark Moon Firewater, is also pretty convenient, but in a different way. I only have it on the list with the Swiftness Potion because they're both potions. Well, kinda. Dark Moon Firewater will reduce your gathering time for skinning by 1 second, and mining slash herbalism by 1.5 seconds, making gathering nodes a lot quicker and it works in all zones, including the Broken Isles. It also slightly increases your size, if you're into that kind of thing. The potion can only be obtained during the Dark Moon Fair, but can be sold, so you can just buy some off the auction house. Number 5, Mobile Banking. Long ago, in the glory days of Cataclysm, guild perks used to be extremely useful and plentiful. Then, about 90% of them were removed over the next two expansions with only 5 remaining today. Of the remaining 5, I'd say mobile banking is probably one of the most useful ones, depending on your access to the guild bank in your guild that is. The mobile bank of course just allows you to access your guild bank for 5 minutes on a 1 hour cooldown. Mobile banking is all kinds of useful in raids, and I'm pretty sure I've seen at least one dropped every single time I've done a raid, since everyone in your guild can use anyone's mobile bank. Hasty Hearth is also pretty neat only having a 15 minute cooldown on your hearthstone instead of 30 minutes is pretty handy. Guild mail is pretty convenient too, makes trading with guildies a lot easier and convenient. Mount up allows you to not really need a mount speed increase since none of them stack, and the quick and the dead, well that one's garbage. It used to be good though, believe it or not, it used to give a 100% extra speed while dead, and not just the 10% it gives now. Number 4, the Stonehide Leather Barding. The Stonehide Leather Barding is an item created by leather workers that allows you to not be dismounted from being dazed while running through a pack of mobs. Sounds really simple, right? Well, it's usually the simple things that are the most useful. With this item, you can just speed run through mobs in Siramar where there are a ton of people who can dispel your illusions, and not worry about eventually being dismounted. 
This item also lasts for two hours and through death. Eight hours if you're a leather worker, so you can just set it and forget it. Number three, the Goblin Glider Kit, an Emerald Winds toy. The glider kit on a short cooldown will propel you forward and slow fall you for two minutes. It's relatively cheap to buy or make and I always carry around a stack since it's great to use in the Broken Isles from high places. I also use the kite toy which has the same effect, but that one has a 15 minute cooldown, so it's nice to have both. Emerald Winds is a toy you can get from hitting all 10 green orbs in Aviana's mini game in High Mountain that will propel you forwards and allow you to jump continuously as long as you're in the air. Combine Emerald Winds with any slow fall and you can essentially fly in the Broken Isles as long as you do it from a high enough place. Probably one of the most useful item combinations from Legion, even if it's not as good as it was before a few other toys were nerfed. Although I probably wouldn't call them the most useful items in Legion. That honor would probably go to the Flight Master's Whistle, but everyone kind of gets that for free so I kind of just left it off the list, despite its immense usefulness. Number 2, the Water Striders. These mounts can be obtained by doing a lot of fishing dailies in Pandaria or Draenor that allow you to simply walk on water while riding them. Arguably one of the most useful items to have while traveling around the Broken Isles currently, as there's just lots of random pools of water everywhere. Both mounts can be used everywhere except Battlegrounds and thankfully escape the region lock nerfs a lot of useful items got hit with. For those of you who don't know, at the start of Legion, a bunch of toys and items got hit with zone-specific restrictions, when before they could be used anywhere. But enough people threw a fit over the Water Strider mounts that Blizzard left them alone, which is great. But if they hadn't hit so many items with those nerfs, I might have had a few different items on this list, because there were a ton that used to be useful but now are kind of meh with their zone restrictions. And number one on this list, the most useful item in the game, is teleportation items. There are so many of them, but a lot of them are hard to get. I'm pretty sure most people have the Dalarand, Garrison, and Normal Hearthstone, giving you three teleports right out the gate baseline. Then there's the many rings you can get to teleport to various locations, like the two rings for the two Dalarands, the Old World Dalaran is a lot cheaper to buy, the Brawler's Guild Ring, the Guild Cloak that gives you a nice and easy to get teleport back to either Stormwind or Org, depending on your faction, that can simply be bought from a guild vendor. My personal favorite teleport, Jaina's Locket, allows me to create a portal to Old Dalaran on a one hour cooldown, which I use whenever I need to get to an auction house since it's the only teleport I have on my priest that doesn't require me to equip something. You know, besides the three hearthstones. There are also two tabards that have teleportations tied to them. The Toll Barad and Argent Crusade tabards. The Toll Barad one will teleport you to your faction quest hub, which will be right in front of a port to your major city, so it's another easy and quick way to get to Org or Stormwind. The Argent Crusade tabard simply takes you to the Argent Crusade in Northrend. Only really useful if you want to do dailies there, or want a quick way to get to Old War or ICC for old raid runs. Then there's all the engineering teleports. My hunter is an engineer with the two tabards I mentioned earlier giving him almost as many ports to places as my mage. There's the wormhole generator for Northrend, which allows you to choose which zone you want to teleport to. The one for Storm Peaks, by the way, takes you right to the entrance of Oldwar. The Pandarian wormhole generator isn't as useful, as it takes you to a random area in Pandaria, but still useful as a tool for getting there if you don't have another portal, or don't want to use the one in Org or Stormwind. Then, depending on whether or not you're a goblin or gnomish engineer, you get two more teleports, one to a vanilla zone and one to a zone in the Burning Crusade. My hunter is a goblin engineer, so he gets to Winter Spring in Area 52. Winter Spring has an auction house, and Area 52 is near Tempest Keep, which I go to quite often to get footage. Gnomish engineers get to go to Gadgetson and Blade Edge Mountain. Not as useful to me as Winter Spring and Netherstorm personally. And there are a handful of other teleporting items that I didn't mention, because literally going over all of them would make this video unnecessarily longer than it should be. So I only talked about the ones I use personally. And that's it for the video. Any other super useful items I may have missed? Let me know in the comments. Just note, I did do a lot of research for this video, so chances are I know about it, and just left it off for whatever reason. I also threw a little Ragnaros on the list as kind of a joke.